Welcome to Small Biz Life, episode 147, What is SSL and Why You Need It on Your Site Now? Mm. <laughs> Maybe yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, this is sort of along those lines, uh, 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 this is Kristen and Jeff. Uh, we do the Small Biz uh, Life podcast. Uh, she is the CPA, so she's the one people always come around to listen to for tax stuff. I have a long history working in the... Uh, IT uh, field uh, and a lot with the web going back years. And so I kind of follow this and this is sort of more my area of expertise, even though it really affects more people than IT at this point. Most business owners have websites and many even try to use blogs to try and do content marketing. And this new Chromium update could affect your numbers. How it'll really roll out, won't know until it happens. Um, but for many reasons, it's not a bad process to do. It helps protect your clients. Yep. So just to give you kind of some background in case you don't know, um, one of our sites, accountingandfocus.com, um, has about, I think last year, or in the last 12 months, we've had about 1.6 million visitors on that site. It's a resource site for students who are taking accounting classes. And um, so we try to keep up on the latest trends in websites and SEO and security because we have this big website. So I think we told you guys about a year ago that um, Google felt that SSL was very important to have on your website. Mm -hmm. um, and we said that once this kind of became a thing that Google was going to kind of insist that you have it on your website, we would let you know. Yeah. Well, we're letting you know. And, 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 and really, truthfully, it's through their browser Chrome, uh, which is what we're specifically talking about today. But I do believe... Uh, Firefox has talked about doing this. I'm sure Internet Explorer is going to do this if they haven't already. And I believe Apple has talked about doing this as well, too. So um, this is something you really need to consider, even if you have uh, ad content at this point. And I'm really hoping we don't know how this will roll out for the uh, ad revenue we have through the site. Uh, we'll, we'll give an update, definitely at least HQ to let them know. Um, but um, um, Can we start first by talking about what SSL is? Well, before we go there, just to let you know, coming out very shortly is the Chrome 68 update, which is what is going to start doing this. And they've already partially in, um, uh, enacted this where, like, if you go to a WordPress, like, if you have a WordPress site and you go to log in, if you don't have SSL set up, it'll already give you the warning uh, on a login page. Um, and I think anywhere you give private information on a not secure website, it will now uh, throw the warning up that it's not secure. Because it's not. And so let's start off, I think, and Kristen's right, we, we, we kind of need to cover what SSL is. So to understand it, you need to understand uh, two things. You know, uh, the major thing that happens are requests uh, and uh, responses. That's, that's how you communicate across the web. You send out a request to a server, it puts together a response and sends it to you. Uh, a lot of times when you see things like 404 errors, uh, that is a response saying that the web page isn't available. So that's one of the possible responses along with getting the actual web page you're asking for. And so when you do that, you essentially send out a clear message across the internet, which means if someone looked at the data, they could see exactly what you're, you're sending, uh, including in the uh, usernames or passwords that are included in that. And um, when it gets out to the server, it will send a clear message back. What SSL is, it is a protocol that, uh, allows encryption to happen. And so a lot of people have heard of SSL certificates. SSL certificates in, a, in and of themselves will not secure a website. What they do is they allow for it to happen. So uh, what happens is if it's set up correctly on your website, when uh, a request comes in, uh, they'll do what's called a handshake. It's like, you know, it's like a little quick contract that they make. There's a, a public key uh, which is used to encrypt data that gets sent out to uh, the person and, and with the information of what type of encryption they need to do, the uh, person requesting will then have to respond back and say, oh, okay, well, here's something else that we, we need to uh, work it and what you said is fine. And so it will create essentially a tunnel um, uh, is kind of what we always called it in the business, you know, an SSL tunnel that connects the uh, client to the um, web server. So the information going back and forth is encrypted within there uh, based off of whatever the certificate's ability is. 
Can we call it a secure wormhole? We can call it a secure wormhole extreme. Okay, um, I think that's better. I like that better. A secure wormhole, I think, is definitely a better term for it. Um, so in your secure wormhole is where your data gets passed. So if you're putting uh, like email addresses with your name, uh, if someone, you know, sn you know they, they call it packet sniffing. Uh, I think uh, they love dogs, whoever came up with these terms. Um, uh, if they sniff packets, they, they, they can actually look at them. But when they're encrypted, instead of seeing the plain text of what's going back and forth, they get a scramble. And unless they have all of the information um, for what the encryption is, the likelihood that they're going to be able to get in there and, and know what's passing through is very limited. Now, the other benefit is one of the major types of attacks that happens on the internet is what they call a man in the middle attack. That's where uh, someone will hack a website, they will put uh, content on the website sometimes, or they'll catch the transit in the middle and they will inject attacks there. And so what will happen is if it's not part of the website itself, um, it's, a, it's called a man in the middle attack. Once it's a man in the middle attack, um, SSL helps prevent those because it's no, it's not going through the same secure protocol that both parties have agreed to in that handshake at the beginning. Okay, so I have a question, and it's something you kind of went by real quick, um, sure. but it kind of it made me panicked a little bit. So you said that when you go to your login page on WordPress, yes, if you don't have SSL, it's going to tell you it's not secure, and it's not. So. When you're putting your username and password into your login page for WordPress, that's not secure at all unless you have an SSL on there and therefore somebody could actually grab your username and password. Correct. Okay, so Correct. I want to stop there's right There's probably here. some kind of encryption that happens there, but it's not considered secure. So I'm not exactly sure what WordPress does to pass it through. There's sometimes internal things, but it's whatever it's sending is still going to be in the clear. So it might be encrypted itself, but it's in the clear when it passes through. And it's definitely not, not would be not considered secure. Okay, so time out right here. If you are using the same password for your WordPress login, your email, your banking, you need to change that password right now. Especially if you use your email to log in, because a lot of times you're giving. Uh, if someone would intercept that, they would they would they would have your email address, and one of the very simple like brute force type of things that they'll do is they go, oh, this is an email address, this is a password, let's just try that. Mm -hmm. And so in theory, it could compromise other things that use that uh, uh, a login name, including your email, and especially if you use the same password, which is another reason why we talk about things like LastPass. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you want to make sure that, um, I know it's a little bit off topic, but you want to make sure that your display name on your site, so when you're responding to people's comments, mm -hmm. your display name and your login name are not the same thing. Yes. Because I see, like what we see on accounting and focus, because mine are not the same, a lot of people try to brute force the website using my name mm -hmm. because that's what displays. So you want to make sure that your display name for your comments and your username are not the same thing. And you can set that up, I think, in user settings. You can make yes. sure that those are different. Okay. I know it's a little bit off topic, but I think since we're talking about security and that kind of like, I, I you know, it's funny because I never thought of that before. Like, wait, if you don't have an SSL, is your login actually secure? No, it's not. And, okay. and I, I'm sure WordPress does something to try and fake it, but the problem is, all of their code is open source too. So yeah. no matter what they do, uh, unless it's somehow modified, it's definitely unsecure. If someone is trying uh, to get your data, if, if that's the key. If they're trying to get your data, they will probably be able to if you're not HTTPS. Okay. Um, there's other ways that they're probably gonna try and attack your website, but um, you're definitely at risk. Um, and the larger your website comes, the bigger the risk is. Right, um, and so, all right, so let me ask you another question then. So you said that getting an SSL is not enough. So let's talk about first, how do you get an SSL certificate? Okay, uh, so there are a couple different ways you can do it. Uh, you can go to what they call a certificate authority. Certificate authority is a, a group of people that essentially, uh, usually with a warranty attached to it for the end user, uh, will create a certificate that will um, 
protect a, uh, a website. And it creates what they call levels of trust. And the higher level of trust, the more rigmarole you have to go through to get the certificate set up, the more expensive it is. Typically, the larger warranty for the end user as well. Um, there's actually like a dollar amount if they get burned uh, and it's a problem because of the certificate, the, the certificate company is becomes in trouble. Um, and, um, but they, they have uh, requirements. It takes a while to set up. They're complicated. Uh, and then you need to get them installed into your web server. Uh, but that's typically only one step, definitely only one step if you're a WordPress. Now, a lot of things like Kajabi kind of force you to use SSL from at the beginning. Um, and those are fairly easy to set up if you're just using Cloudflare. Um, but like in WordPress, you could use Cloudflare. Um, um, and a lot of times hosts will also sell um, or resell um, uh, certificates as well. Um, and on top of it, some hosts are now using, there's a group that does domain authentications called Let's Encrypt. And I think for most small business user, users, where uh, especially if you're not doing monetary transactions on the site itself, uh, it's probably more than enough because there's no warranty involved with a domain um, uh, a secured site or verified site, but they, it, it's a high level um, uh, free um, certificate that gets installed once by, we used host M um, and they install it for you. And then we just have to connect a WordPress to it. Okay. And, so are the, are the certificates that you get through companies like HostM, are those sufficient for what most people are doing? Or for HostM, do most definitely, yeah. Okay, so if when... A, if you have a complex site, go ahead. So, because um, you said like there's different levels. So I know that there's the free SSL project, which HostM mm -hmm. is a member of. That's how we found them is through that. Um, and there's a number of different hosting companies that work with them. Mm-hmm. I know that uh, I think we've made Deborah nervous. She's watching live and I think we made her a little nervous. Um, so I know HostGator announced that they are going to be providing free SSL certificates now. Probably um, through the same uh, group. Yeah. Okay. So, but there's some, it, it, the way that you kind of said it, you said there's different levels and if you're not yeah. doing monetary transactions, then what we have is fine. But what if we are doing monetary transactions? Like I know like some of our what we're using members is, is still probably fine. But like if you start getting to a really large e-commerce platform, mm -hmm. uh, I would probably go to where you have to go through the rigmarole and pay some money up front. And it kind of adds insurance um, to the transactions. Okay. So it's not so much that there's a problem with the certificate. It's just you're not getting the insurance policy. Th there could be. Certificates have a lot of different levels of encryption. And many of those levels of encryption are no longer adequate. And, you know, I, 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 I would not get a certificate at this point that is less than 256-bit encrypted. I, I wouldn't necessarily get one that's more, but you want at least 256-bit encryption on a certificate. That is, that is probably the more important thing. Uh, the other thing, the verification is the other levels of certificates you can get. They have different levels of encryption that you can, uh, or verification you go through where you're passing documents literally back and forth with the company so that they really know who you are before they get, issue a certificate. Um, that's, that's something uh, you can also get through a certificate authority. Um, I think domain level is, is good as long as you have at least 256-bit encryption. Okay. Um, How do you know that? Uh, well, you, you would check with uh, whoever's going to supply you the ticket and ask them what is the encryption on it before they give it to you. Okay. Uh, a lot of times, especially if they charge money, um, they typically have uh, different levels of encryption. So you just want to make sure that you have the 256-bit one uh, included. Now, you can actually create them yourselves, but uh, uh, the problem is no domain is going to trust you. So uh, it's good for like uh, really developing stuff, but it's not good for actually um, uh, using in the, in the live uh, world. Uh, so, so if you find something telling you how to make it yourself, don't do that for something that is going to be used by other people. Okay. Um, we've also had discussions before where you've talked about shared SSL certificates. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, and I'm not sure how many people still use these because it's kind of like shared hosting where the cost is spread out over the server, but the problem is, and this is kind of the same problem with shared hosting, 
Uh, but to me, it's bigger is uh, if, any, if any of these sites get compromised, your SSL certificate gets compromised. Um, so I would stay away from anything that is called a shared certificate. Um, I, I don't know if anyone even still does that anymore. I haven't done research to see if people still do that. I think a lot of times with like groups like Less Encrypt coming on, uh, you're seeing more people go that way or probably reselling uh, certificate authorities, um, uh, actual certificates instead of just doing it, uh, you know, through these shared certificates, which typically didn't have very high encryption anyway. So um, they were really like junk. Um, and I'm sorry for anyone that has a good one. I apologize. They might exist, but in my experience, I would just stay away from them. So one thing that I want you guys to be careful of, and I'm thinking more of the accounting side of things now. Mm -hmm. So once things like this come out, right? Like, so when you register your business to say you're going to have employees, you have all these spam companies that come out of the woodwork and like, you need to buy posters, display posters. And they're like thousands of dollars to get these posters that you need to have on your wall when you can print them out for free you know, on an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper and put them on the wall. Um, but I think that there are going to be companies that are going to try to take advantage of small businesses. It's like, you know, those do domain registration companies that you Oh, the bales, the bail ones you get. Oh my God. Right. And they're like, oh, it's going to be like $49 to renew your, your domain. If you, if you don't, you'll, you'll, you'll lose it forever, which is right. true. If you, if you don't register it, you'll probably never get it back. Uh, but uh, the simple fact is you just keep doing it through the people who you bought it from and you're paying like 12 or 15 bucks a year uh, for a dot com. So my big fear is that there are going to be companies that are going to start mailing things out or emailing, mm -hmm. trying to scare you saying, oh, you don't have SSL. You know, you need to buy SSL. It's going to cost you hundreds of dollars to do it. Don't do that. Contact yeah. your hosting company first. Mm -hmm and find out what they'll do. Like I said, I know HostGator is doing them for free. Mm -hmm. There's, you can Google, um, we'll put a link to the show notes, which will come out on Monday. Um, the free SSL project. There's a whole list of hosts Let's there. Yep. Um, is, so it's called Let's Encrypt now? They changed Let's the name. Let's Encrypt, well, that is the, that is the, the project for this. And, oh, okay. And, uh, I forget the name of the, uh, uh, there's a nonprofit behind it and a lot of big companies are supporting it because uh, they're one to help fight uh, uh, online uh, hackers to help get rid of let's uh, uh, those man in the middle attacks. A lot of tech tech companies want everyone to go to SSL anyway. Right. So, okay. So just, you know, I think, but I think this is going to happen. I think that businesses are going to start receiving phone calls about this kind of like the Google listing phone calls you're going to see phone calls, you're going to see mail, you're going to see all this stuff that's going to bombard you to say, oh, you need to have this done, you need to do this. Um, I just want you to be aware that there are going to be scams out there for this. Yeah. Because this is going to be a big thing. The news is going to start talking about this. And once they do, the scammers are going to start coming out of the woodwork. And um, there's one final bit you have to be uh, concerned about. When you or talking back and forth with the web server that has a content management system like WordPress on it or Squarespace or any of these things, you have to make sure that that is also, uh, that knows it needs to be an SSL. And, um, and WordPress has, has become really simple to do. Uh, there are plugins and uh, there's one called Really Simple SSL, which you know, you back up your site just in case, you always do that before you uh, do a plugin that affects your website. You literally click a button and tell it to encrypt everything. And you don't have to know how to do it. It, it takes care of all of the details. Because trust me, this used to be a much bigger pain. You'd have to go through it and, and, and fix a lot of manual links in your website. Uh, you don't have to worry about that. It's very simple. And then once you've done that, after you've had your certificate installed, um, it, 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 uh, it will deal with all of the redirects for you. So if someone goes through an old link that's an HTTP link to social media somewhere back to your site, it'll redirect them to the correct page. It'll force them to be in, um, uh, in SSL when they get to your site. It'll, it'll make the, uh, the companies happy. It'll protect your website, the people who are on your website and you and your data. Yeah. So and I, th I think with stuff like GDPR, you're going to see growing uh, uh, pushes on companies to do releases if you get hacked. 
uh, this all this will also help protect your website so um, you know this protects you on many different levels so you know I think at this point it's probably time to do the, the not secure uh, thing that they're using at this point it's a little frightening uh, and it might scare off some people and I would not be surprised if it gets more scary in the future to where they blank out your page and especially on pages that are login pages or where they have to put in personal information this this might actually start blocking out those specific pages right now uh, i'm not exactly sure i haven't seen that because right now even if you go to your uh login for wordpress if you don't set up you will see the words not secure in your uh, address bar right so if if you're watching this um you know via youtube or facebook or on our website if you look at the the address bar you should see a lock and it's green and it says secure. Mm -hmm. If you're on a website that does not have SSL, um, cause it's harder now because like I'm looking at Facebook, it doesn't say HTTPS, you know, colon slash slash Facebook.com. It just says Facebook.com. Mm -hmm. And so to know if it's secure, you've got to look for the, you're looking for the green lock that's closed and it mm -hmm. says secure. If you're on a website that is not secure, it's not going to say HTTP anymore. And then the rest of the web address, it's just going to say not secure with, an, with um, I think, a circle with like an I. Yeah. Um, and so but that's how mm -hmm. you determine it now. So you can't look for the HTTP or the HTTPS. Mm -hmm. it's, Chrome is not showing that anymore. Yeah, unless you cut and paste it, you won't see the, the protocol in front of it. You just see what they indicate. And now the other thing too is um, if you use a caching software like um, Lightspeed Cache, whenever you make major changes like that, you always want to go into your cache and say purge all. That way it'll get rid of all of the stored things on, on the server just to make sure that there's no lingering issues. It, it would naturally go through and do it anyway over time, but to help speed up the process, you can just say purge all and it will, it will re-cache uh, everything the way it normally would at that point. You're just, you're, you're giving it a head start to do that. Okay. So, so it looks to me like there's three steps. Mm -hmm. You purchase and have installed the certificate, mm -hmm. right? And usually your host is going to do that for you. Most of you are going to use your host to do that. Especially if you're not technologically savvy, you're going to probably want to go through your host to do it. Okay. And your host should charge you little or nothing to do this. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you, if you call up your host and they're like, Oh, it's going to be hundreds of dollars. You need to think about getting a new host. Um, the second thing you need to do is you need to put the plugin on your website and what's it called? Real easy, really easy SSL. Really simple SSL. Really simple SSL. This is if you have a WordPress site, if you've got a website built on a different platform, you're going to have to figure out what the plugin is for them. But if you're on WordPress, really simple SSL, you install that, you click the button to activate it, and then it pretty much does its thing. Yep, and and then essentially, you know, you know, after you clear your cache, you know, you go back, and and you'll notice like, and I always like to do is make sure it's you're you're trying to go HTTP to your website, and and um and um you know, so especially it's like go to your page and click on a post going to it because they'll all say H, they'll all be HTTP pages. You just click on that, and it will it should redirect you. And you should be on the secure version with that lock up in your uh, Chrome browser. Okay. So then, and step three, Jeff kind of said it, mm -hmm. go into your caching plugin, which if you've listened to us before, you probably have a caching plugin on your WordPress site. Um, we talked about those, that those help speed up the delivery of your site. Mm -hmm. And so you need to make sure that you, um, that you clear that out. And usually the caching plugin is just going to have a button for that. Yeah. So get the certificate installed, installed, uh, install real simple SSL, and then go into your caching, um, plug in and clear out your cache. Mm. Okay. So if you have any questions about this, you can leave questions on the website. If you're listening or watching at smallbizlife.com, if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, you can leave us comments there. Um, you can go into our Facebook group, which is facebook.com slash group slash small biz life. Mm -hmm. um, and you can leave a post there, but this is something um, that you're, you know, you're going to want to start this process soon because when the next Chrome update comes out in July, um, which is going to be Chrome version 68. I realize we're in July. 
we are in July right now, it's going to come out sometime this month. Um, you're going to see, you know, you're going to see that not secure on your website. And remember, we've trained people, right? We've been training people over the years. And I've even talked to people who teach like computer classes at senior centers. And we've taught people like, look for the green lock, mm -hmm. right? Look for that green lock. If you don't see that green lock, be wary. Well, if they're going to start seeing this, you know, if they're going to see not secure on all these different websites, people are going to shut down your website, mm -hmm. right? They're going to click out of it or they're going to go back. So this is something that you really need to consider doing because of the way we've trained people to look for security on websites. Yes. Okay. So hopefully you found this really helpful. Um, I'm glad that we were able to bring you this episode in such a timely manner. We really try to do that for you guys. If you thought that this episode was great, please share it out with mm. the people that you know um, so that we can help get the word out about this very important topic for small business owners. So thank you so much. And we will see you next time.